I mentioned earlier that the default Java serialization isn't the only way that you can serialize out objects. Um, there are other libraries. Many of them actually use a binary format, and many of them are built for speed because that's what uh, a lot of these applications are looking for. There are other ways, though, that make an output that is perhaps easier for humans to interact with and that might work better across platforms. One of the issues with Java serialization is it only works when you're communicating with other Java programs. There are two, I guess you could say, main text-based data formats that are used broadly in the world today. These are XML and JSON. And because XML happens to be built into Scala at a fairly low level in the language, we're going to talk about XML. And we want to extend it, the reason for doing it in this video playlist, is we want to use XML as an alternate form of serialization. So first we need to understand what XML is. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. And I want to create just a little XML file here. So I'm going to say New, Other. And I happen to have installed a plugin in Eclipse that allows me to actually create XML files. You might not have this. It really doesn't matter. So let's see, what could we do? How about I'm going to make a file called drawing.xml because we're kind of foreshadowing here the fact that at some point we might actually want to be able to serialize out some of our drawings. Now by default, you get this view of an XML file in Eclipse. I actually want to view the source. So our XML file has this header information which says that it's using version 1.0 and an encoding of UTF-8. The standard for XML is really made up of, you have things called, uh, ta well you have elements um, that have tags, you have start tags and, and end tags, and then some other encoded data and then plain text between them. So these tags are made with the angle braces, less than and greater than, and if I want to do a drawing, I might have something like that. And you can see that Eclipse automatically closed off my tag for me. So an opening tag just has a word inside of this, and then the closing tag has a slash in front of it. Now in addition to the word, we can put attributes. We'll do that here. So a drawing has you know, potentially multiple drawables, but we have one that's the root, that's special, and the root is always a transform. So here, I'll go ahead and close that off, and Eclipse will put that in there for me. I want to add additional information to, to this. Now, you'll note that XML, just like when you make parentheses or brackets or whatever in a program, you have to properly balance things. So if drawing opens before draw a bowl, Drawable has to close before drawing does. They have to be properly nested. And there are two ways that I can add data into an element like this. One way of adding it is with things called attributes. And an attribute will have the name and then an equal sign and then in quotes a value. So all of our roots are always of type transform. Uh, they each have a transform type to them, so trans type, and we'll just say that our top one is a translate, that's what we get by default. And you might recall that all of our transforms had two values. So if I were going to serialize this, I would have to store out those two values. So it might look something like that. In addition to having these Attributes. So attributes are good when the data is short and there's only one value for it. But you might recall that a transform, in addition to having these kind of simple fields in it, also has the children. And so inside of a transform, we would have other drawables. So I might have a drawable of type rectangle. And then maybe I would have another drawable of type text. Okay. Inside of here, I would need to put appropriate attributes. So our rectangles have like an X, 
a y, they had a width, they had a height. They also had a color inside of them. Now the color being larger, I'm going to, instead of making that another attribute, I'm going to make it so that colors are actually other tags inside of here. So the color needs values for red, and depending upon if I'm going for a color of, say, uh, blue, I would have no red, I would have no green, my blue would be at 1.0, and my opacity would be at 1.0, so it's completely opaque. Now, if I just close this in Eclipse, it's going to do that. It's going to add an automatic close tag. There is an alternate form of making what's called an empty element, where you end it with the slash greater than. And that's it's basically the same thing as putting a, a greater than and then having a slash color after it. They do the exact same thing. This is just a slightly shorter syntax for it. We could fill in the other elements of our text. There's no point in me spending time in the video doing that. I'll do that offline. But the goal here is for you to see kind of what XML documents look like. They're made up of these tags. And what I haven't shown is the fact that I can, I can just put whatever text I want inside of here as well. Technically, you can also do com comments. Uh, okay, so depending upon what it is that you're saving, you might actually have some just plain text elements. Uh, there are, of course, other ways of representing things. Instead of making X be an attribute on this, I could have done something like this where I make X into a sub-element that has a text inside of it for what its value is. My general rule of thumb, as I said before, is if it's single-valued and it's simple uh, and short, doesn't need multiple lines, I just make an attribute. If it's something more complex, like the color here, which has multiple values inside of it, or if it were going to span multiple lines, or there are potentially lots of them, like the fact that I have multiple sub-drawables inside of my transform, those types of things become other elements. So that's the general structure of what an XML document looks like. We'll come back and we'll see how we deal with these XML documents inside of a Scala program.